like I could see this one up on top of the seat. Down there is Leithport, which I visited the other day and found relatively uninteresting. There's just a tiny little pocket that's somewhat reminiscent of what it might have been in the past. And now we're at Granton Harbor, or at least close to it. And I'm going to be wandering through Granton and Granton Harbor in this direction. So there you see where Leith is right near the 64 and I've traveled by bus and I'm probably right to the left of 43 where there seems to be a double red road pointing at Granton. I'm probably right in there. In fact you can see that loop right to the left of Granton Harbor, that long narrow spit, probably this um, barricade or breakwater. This uh, last street, oh, well, lower Granton Road segues into West Harbor Road, at least as a main road staying along the water's edge. And I'm going down here just because I have three days to go before I go back to the States. I've seen almost everything in Edinburgh, and uh, this is just another opportunity to go wander around. So I'm in search of anything interesting and historically old and interesting. And this may be the remains of a lighthouse. Well, here I am at the water's edge for all that that's worth. It's uh, filled with the beaches, covered with trash and the bric-a-brac, literally bricks, of prior construction and demolition. But I think I'm working my way that way where those people are apparently along a bike path or something. The remains of something, probably just an old industrial complex. This is the bike path and the walking path to Silver Nose, one mile from here. Whatever that is, there's an interpreter. There's another map telling us where we probably might be. <laughs> there's Leith <clears throat> there to the right. Granton, see where I'm at. And we were just at this little spit right here. And we're walking through this industrialized area. And we're en route to Silvernose. And beyond that is Cremond Island. Okay, I see it. And then South Queens Ferry, High Street, and Port Edgar. So that should be back to my right here inland, so we'll go explore the coast and then maybe get a chance to walk inside off the coast and find it and then stroll through the Forta Quarter to Silver Nose. We'll do that now. And here's somewhat what this area might have looked like back then in the day, 1845. And while apologizing somewhat lightheartedly for the lack of fish, fish fossils, they do indicate that it's still possible to find fish poo fossils, which will look like these things. Of course, that assumes that this part of the beach is enough to support what they're saying, because the part we've just seen over there is covered with brick and crap. And I just wonder what this solitary little bird is. The rain has subsided a bit. Casting some lovely color on this far shore when I get to it.
about a hundred foot long stretch of rock, this heavy steel fencing mesh has been attached by those devices there, which in themselves are quite strong, to the both the cement but also the rocks themselves. But and here is what's interesting. The sea apparently has been so wickedly strong that it has literally ripped it loose from most of those metal holdings that were even embedded in the rock. They have held, but the fencing itself was not strong enough to withstand the power of the sea. And this is the Cremond fish. This is a little place of Cremond something or other. And out there is the island, and I'm told that you can walk out there when the tide is low. Although you sure want to be timing that one correctly to get back in time. Or you might spend the night perched on one of those old bridge piers. And to the left of that flagpole and turnaround is a cafe. And I'm also told by a man I chatted with who didn't have a clue where he was going. Knew where he was going, but didn't how long, have any idea how long it would take him to get there. Um, is a cafe and a bus stop that presumably can get me out of here. And here are the crossing times for the tide. This is the little port of Cremond for sure. And there's supposed to be a cafe which hopefully is right up there. After my walk from Grampton Harbor to here, I stopped in the little cafe for something to eat. And here I've had potato and leek soup and a very nice heavy roll which I'll see if I can get an additional one. And this is dessert. I'll get the name of it in a few minutes, but it's dates and raisins. You see some sugar on it, and then whipped cream is normally used with it. Okay, now tell me what it is, please. You don't know what it is. No, you go ahead and say what it is. It's e Ecclefechan. Okay. It's Scottish. Ah, oh, yes, yes. A Scottish recipe from Ecclefechan. <laughs> is it Ecclefechan? <laughs> so I had my little lunch in this little cafe here. And if you just look closely, you can see a rainbow arcing all the way across. This will typify a good day for me in Scotland or even Northern England. Sunny with clouds, lots of wind, and evidence of recent rain. Looks like a Canadian goose. Unless this is a river, and it may be, we can see the tide pulling out. I don't really think I'm going to the bus stop right now. I think I'm going up. River Almond Walkway. So I'll do it. Pretty good size little river. Your little upriver pan. It's getting there. pretty good water rising down through here, probably from the rains, as well as a muddiness same reason. This is a little mall, actually a hallway, but a mall, that goes through from one street to another, just like a half a quarter, maybe 22 and a half degrees of a circle. 
but it has this beautiful little archway in it. I mean, dome in it. And these curved shop windows, which are pretty. An interesting shop overall. And it's pretty great up here in this archway that leads out into the second street. was the spout there but it isn't spouting anymore. There used to be something right up in there that was held on that little device. And this was a doorway, the emblem on it, steel door or iron door that allowed for access into the wellhead. And as you can see it would pour out through both sides. 